Now we'll look at some applications. And by that we mean applications of this concept in the real world. There are plenty of real world situations that involve subtraction. And this example is one of them. Three students are selling books to raise money for a charity. They need to sell a total of 2,500 books. John has sold 733, Mary has sold 815, and Sue has sold 392. How many more books need to be sold for them to reach their goal? The goal, remember, is 2,500. Well, let's start by thinking about what they've sold. The 733, the 815, and the 392. That's how much each of those three people sold. If we add all of those together, we'll get the total number of books sold. So let's do that. 733, 815, and 392. And I'm adding these. So let's start over here. 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 2 is 10. And then uh, starting from the bottom down here, 9 and 1 is 10. And 3 gives me 13, and the 1 there gives me 14. And then in the last column, I see my 7 and 3 add up to 10, plus the 8 is 18, plus that 1 is 19. So I have 1940. 1,940 books are sold so far. Now their goal is to reach a total of 2,500. They've sold 1,940. How many more need to be sold? We'll find that by subtracting. 2,500 minus 1,940. So I start here on the right. 0 minus 0 is 0. And then 0 minus 4 I can't do. So I come over to the 5, I cross it out, make it a 4, and stick my 1 right there on the 0. So now I have a 10 right there minus 4. And 10 minus 4 is 6. And then I try to do 4 minus 9, and I can't. So I need to borrow from the 2 here. The 2 becomes a 1, and that 4 becomes a 14. So now I have 14 minus 9, which is 5. And then in the last column here, or the, the last column I'm subtracting, 1 minus 1 is 0, so I'll just leave that blank. 560 is my answer. 560 books. That's how many they need to sell, in addition to what they've already sold, in order to reach their goal. Another example. Joe has $852 in the bank. He withdraws $230 to purchase a new bike and $176 to purchase a new computer monitor. How much does he have left? Well, withdrawal means taking the money out, and he does that twice. He withdraws $230 and then withdraws $176. So we can start with the $852 and then just take away those amounts. We'll take away the 230 first, 852 minus 230. 2 minus 0 is 2, 5 minus 3 is 2, and 8 minus 2 is 6. So that's how much money he has left after the first withdrawal, after taking away the 230 right there. Then, from that 622, he takes away another 176. So after the first withdrawal, there's $622 left in the bank. And then he withdraws 176. So 622 minus 176. In the ones column here, I'm going to have to borrow. I'll come over here and make that 2 a 1 and stick a 1 there. So now I have 12 minus 6. It gives me 6 right there. Then in this next column, I have 1 minus 7. I can't do that, so I need to come over here, make that 6 a 5, and put a 1 there. So now I have 11 minus 7, which is 4. And then in the last column here, I have 5 minus 1, 
which is 4. So 446 is my answer. And that's $446. That's how much is left after making these two withdrawals. Now I will also show you another way to solve this problem. I could take the amount that he's withdrawing, 230, and then the amount that he's withdraw withdrawing in the second withdrawal and add those up. 230 plus 176. And those are pretty easy to add. 0 and 6 is 6. 3 and 7 is 10. And then 2 and 1 and 1 is 4. So Joe is withdrawing a total of $406. So he starts with 852 and then he takes away a total of 406. So what he has left should be my final answer. And I can do this. The 2 minus the 6 right there is a problem. I need to come over to the 5 and make it a 4 and then stick a 1 on that 2. So I have 12 minus 6 gives me a 6 right there. And then in the next column, I have 4 minus 0, which is 4, and then 8 minus 4, which is 4. So once again, I get $446. Either of these approaches is OK. They both give you the same answer as they should. As a general rule, if, if there are more than if there is more than one way to solve a problem, then every way that it's solved should give you the same example. And we see that happen here. And in this case, one of these solutions isn't necessarily better than the other. Sometimes you might find two ways to solve a problem. And one way will be really hard. The other way will be really easy. They both give the same answer. But the easy one is obviously preferable just for that reason, because it's easier. You work an easier solution. It, it's, it gets done faster and usually you're less likely to make a mistake. In this case, they're both about the same level of difficulty. Both are conceptually correct. You can think of the problem either way. You can think of them as two separate withdrawals, like we did in, in, in the first case here, or you can think of them as the two withdrawals totaling up to a certain total amount, and that much is subtracted from the original amount.